Starts tonight, Marlins and Braves. Familiar faces in unfamiliar places. The Braves' lead in the East has dwindled. The upstart Marlins, they find themselves tied for first with last year's division champ. This is game one, and when it's over, first place will be settled. shut rolling windows shut ACs on big three game series starts tonight in Miami it'll be settled for a night will first place after tonight because the Marlins and the Braves open play at 28 and 25 the Braves have dropped four in a row John Carlos Stanton and the fish have learned how to win on the road Casey McKee Freddie Freeman in the house as Miami and Atlanta renew acquaintances hi everybody Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Well, isn't this interesting? As the Marlins get to the end of May without Jose Fernandez, everyone thought that would be a, a deadly body blow that would just knock this young team off its uh, feet. It hasn't. They've survived. They're three over. The Braves have come back to the pack. This is two first place teams, Hutt. Who would have thought when we left spring training that we'd be in this situation right now? But I think without Jose Fernandez, it, it shows a little bit and it's shown us a little bit about what this club is made of coming into this season the Atlanta Braves had dominated the Miami Marlins over the course of three or four years but there was a three game series here in this ballpark in which the Marlin bats exploded and swept the Atlanta Braves you know it's amazing the bats came alive the Marlins uh, had a couple of nine run games they hit five home runs in the series but what is forgotten a little bit about in that series Jose Fernandez went eight innings, gave up just two hits, no runs. Nathan Evaldi had a seven-inning performance and gave up just one run. So the Marlins also pitched really well against Atlanta in that three-game series. It's a three-gamer. It starts tonight. It's Miami. It's Atlanta. Two first-place teams as we head towards June. Taking the ball tonight, Tom Kohler will break that down when we return as the Fish and the Braves get going on a three-gamer.
Head out to center field. Great intervening, Jeff Conine. Gentlemen. And, Rich, thank you very much, and good evening again, everybody. Tonight, Tom Kohler goes for his fifth win of the season and hopes to pitch a little better here at home than he did last time out against the Milwaukee Brewers. A little bit of a trend lately, but for the most part, Kohler's been very good through his uh, nine starts this year, ten starts. Yeah, very good. Uh, probably the Marlins' most consistent pitcher they've had so far this year. And we'll look at uh, the graphic a little bit later, but Tom Kohler, this, uh, this is a start in, uh, in, in L.A. Yep. And when he's in the strike zone and he's uh, obviously gives up a, a big bomb to Yasiel Puig that's uh, up and out of the strike zone. And he's been kind of a Jekyll and Hyde. The, la the next start against San Francisco in San Francisco was outstanding. You see these pitches have some great sharp break uh, coming in and out of the strike zone. It's all about what Tom Kohler is going to show up tonight. You see the numbers there. And it's not really a home or a road thing. He's got a great start at home. He's got a great start on the road. So last start at home, not so great against the Milwaukee Brewers. You take away a couple of those starts. His ERA is well under three. But we'll see what kind of uh, start Tom Kohler puts together tonight. Yeah, last time out, the Brewers, uh, Mark Reynolds, had a couple of homers against him. Uh, his overall numbers in May, three of those starts, no runs allowed. So he's been, he's not just been good, he's been almost dominating when he's at his best. And he's had four starts, seven innings or more with no runs allowed. So we'll see if it was just a blip. A little a rough, bit of a rough start against Milwaukee last time out and get him back on track. The Marlins certainly need him to be one of the leaders now, which sounds funny to say when he was slotted as the number five guy when the season started. Well, he's really picked it up and done a tremendous job in that role. He's kind of a, the bulldog on this staff, and I think a guy that, that these other pitchers are really looking up to as far as work ethic and what he does on that mound out there is composure-wise. Uh, it should be a fun series. I don't know how many people would have picked a, a battle for first series at the beginning of the year, but that's what it is here on May 30th, and we're going to go into June against the Braves this weekend. One-third poll tonight. Braves Marlins next. Toyota, let's go places. By AT&T U-verse TV. Check availability 1 800 pick AT&T. Rethink possible. By Checkers, Checkers brings big flavor for a small price. Feed your craving for quality for only a buck. Cha Ching. And by your South Florida Honda dealers and SFHondaDealers.com. Cha Ching. Here come the Marlins. Here comes Tom Kohler out onto the Diamond as the Fish and the Braves open up a three-game series here in Miami. And here's the Braves lineup. Atlanta having lost four in a row all to Boston with Jason Hayward, B.J. Upton, Freddie Freeman, 
Numbers are scary for the Marlins. He's 0 for 24. He's too good a hitter for that to last. And uh, Justin Upton is slotted behind him. Evan Gaddis, who's got 10 home runs. Chris Johnson's at third. Andleton Simmons, the shortstop. Tommy Lestella in his, sec his third major league game. And Julio Tehran hits ninth for the Braves. Tom Kohler, as Tommy described him, a little up and down his last couple starts. Down, certainly, in the start against the Brewers. Mark Reynolds jumped him for two two-run homers. Underway, here's Hayward, pitch a penny's first pitch, lined in a right field, a base hit. Jason Hayward is showing signs of life. He's had a nice run over the last three weeks. About five games in a row now for Jason Hayward. There's a look at the defense with Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton in the outfield. One change in the infield, Ed Lucas getting the start at second base. So Lucas and Echeverria up the middle. McGee and Jones at the corners and Salta Lamacchia behind the plate. Kohler now facing B.J. Upton. And Upton fouls one over the screen. Back and out of play. The Braves are not in a great mood right now. and They shouldn't be. They lost four straight against Boston. Two in Atlanta and two in Boston. And they blew leads in three of the four games. Last night a 4-3 loss. They had a 3-1 lead and then an avalanche of errors. Boston came back to walk off. Up the middle into center field. That's a base hit. Hayward will stop at second. B.J. Upton with a hit. And so Hayward and Upton open with hits. And now Kohler gets to face Freeman, Justin Upton, and Evan Gaddis. Just a flat slider, middle of the plate. Hayward hit a fastball. Upton hits that breaking ball. And right now, Tom Kohler getting a visit from his catcher, and Jared Saltalabaki. The Braves don't run a lot. They have their two best base stealers on base, though. Hayward has eight steals. B.J. Upton with eight stolen bases. So they have speed on the bases. The drought that you saw for Freeman has got to be scary for the Marlins because having watched Freddie Freeman over the last three years, he's as steady as they get. Not a guy that goes into prolonged slumps. He's hit about 320 over his last dozen games. Well, how about this? The fact that he's, he's 0 for 24, you pointed that out against the Marlins this year. But in his career, he's still a 262 hitter against Miami with a lot of big hits. Kohler with a fastball and a swing and a miss. And it's 0-2. Phantom Cam here for the series and blink and you almost missed it. <laughs> On Phantom Cam, everything slowed down, that's, even your reaction that's time. How quickly that ball got by Tom Kohler. He's 0-2. On Freeman. Fastball struck him out. Elevated. And he got it by him. So one out, but still two tough hitters to get. This is the type of pitcher Tom Kohler has been. He's very aggressive. And I, I really like the fact that after giving up a couple of base hits, one on a fastball, one on a breaking ball, he didn't get tentative. He didn't try to nibble. He went right after Freddie Freeman, a good hitter. Not Justin Upton, who has provided a lot of pop for a Braves lineup that has struggled offensively this year. Upton, though, in the cleanup spot, a dozen doubles, 13 homers, and a breaking ball from Kohler for a strike. His slugging percentage is just a tick under 600 right now in a seven game run. Well, he's always had some pretty good success against the Marlins as well. Four career home runs. Against Miami. Hayward's at second. Brother BJ is at first. And Justin Upton steps out. When you look at the Braves numbers, as far as on base percentage, it's under 300 as a team. And as Craig pointed out, a 237 batting average is 12th in the National League. Swing and a miss. 0 oh 2. Freddy Gonzalez and the Braves had that terrific start to the season. But they have come back to the pack. That four game skid against the Red Sox has them at 28 and 25. And of course, the Marlins taking two in Washington to improve to 28 
and 25. Kohler misses and the count is one and two. Look at that everything. Even the balls hits early in the strike zone so everything's been in the strike zone except that last pitch and that's not been the M.O. for Kohler who at times can be effectively wild. One two. Sort of like that. No problem with the velocity. How about that last fastball 97. We haven't seen that too often from Tom Cole. A little overthrow maybe. Kohler gave up a couple runs. Against the Braves. Back on the 21st. That was in Atlanta. Six and a third innings. No decision. In a loss, little ground ball, Echeverria to the bag, Lucas with the turn, and Kohler gets out of the inning. So the leadoff singles by Hayward and B.J. Upton wasted. Kohler escapes, and on to the bottom of the first, Miami and Atlanta underway. Clouds around a hot and humid evening in Miami. Scoreless ball game. Bottom of the first. Marlins lineup looks this way. Christian Yelich is in the leadoff spot. Ed Lucas gets a start. Right handers actually have a little more success than lefties against Julio Tehran. Giancarlo Stanton, Casey McGee, Garrett Jones, Jared Saltalamachia. A lot of pop in that seven spot with Marcelo Zuna. Adani Echeverria is the shortstop. And Tom Kohler. Will hit ninth. Well, no question, one of the strengths of the Atlanta Braves is their pitching. They're number one in the league in ERA. And this guy near the top of the list. Look at the numbers a 177 ERA for Julio Tehran, and he's on a nice little run. He went uh, six shutout innings last time out, and the time before that, he threw a complete game shutout. So Tehran is tough. The slider is always his. Big out pitch. And he's been very, very good against the Marlins in five career starts. 3 0 with a 2 5 1 ERA. Yelich climbs in with Lucas and Stanton. Also scheduled to appear here in the first. Jerry Davis, crew chief, calling balls and strikes. Quinn Walcott's at first. Greg Gibson at second. Phil Cuzzy, the umpire, at third. Yelich, 50 games through as the Marlins and the Braves head towards June. A third of the way through. This 2014 season. Yelich a couple of hits. In Tuesday night's wild 8 5 win over the Nationals. Big breaking ball comes a long way. That's a curve ball that he'll mix in with the slider. And you talk about consistency. In 11 starts this year, nine of those starts, two earned runs or less from Tehran. 
And two of those starts have been shutouts. Two shutouts already in the 11 starts. Yelich can't touch it. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Braves defensively, middle of the pack right now in the yeah, National League. You pointed it out, Rich. It, it was not a good defensive team at Fenway Park. Uh, they made three errors last night. But the Uptons in the outfield, they each made errors last night. Hayward's in right. Johnson Simmons, La Stella, the youngster. We'll get a look at Tommy La Stella at second base. Freddie Creeman and Evan Gaddis behind the plate. And Lucas climbs in. I think a lot of people were surprised to see Lucas in the lineup. Miami's been going with Derek Dietrich, the Georgia Tech product against right handers, but Lucas has had a, a bit of success against Tehran. There aren't a whole lot of uh, big sample sizes to choose from. As we pointed out, sometimes uh, right handers have as much success as lefties. You know, uh, Mike Redman said it best in, uh, in talking to us about Ed Lucas in the lineup tonight. Uh, he said, you know what? When Ed Lucas gets a start, it seems like something positive always happens in the game. He'll do something. Might be a play, might be a, a base hit, a big hit, might be a time where he moves the runner over from second to third. Might be a base hit the first inning. Into right field. <laughs> Lucas is aboard. All right, here was the Braves last night in what was a frustrating meltdown after a 3 1 lead. Yeah, the eighth inning, remember, they had a lead. Here comes Justin Upton. Ball squirts by him. He's charged with an error. A little miscommunication on a ground ball up the middle. There's Estella, the young second baseman. Now B.J. Upton comes in. He boots the ball in center field. So it was that kind of night for the Braves in Boston. And this was the final play, Chris Johnson. Lestella couldn't hold it and the run scored. Here's Stanton now, and he takes a fastball for a strike. 92 miles an hour. Stanton, a really nice stay in D.C., reestablishing himself as the, uh, the nation's masher, so to speak, in that ballpark. Stanton has terrific career numbers in D.C. It's a high, high, deep ball, left field, in the corner, and foul. Wow. That nearly scraped the steel girders of the roof that was so high. We have not seen a ball in this third year at Marlins Park hit any of the beams up high. That one was as close as you're going to come. Giancarlo absolutely jumped on a hanging breaking ball. It was in his eyes, and he just pulled it foul. It's a long strike, and Tehran is out in front 0-2. Lucas at first. Stanton walked three times on Tuesday night after getting a base hit in his first at bat and that was because he dominated the Nationals on Monday night with a three for four night and a 447 foot home run to center field. But even his walks with him on base uh, created created things within the inning. Stanton drives it center field deep back goes up then looking up. Gone. Oh, he is just amazing. Two run shot. Dead center field. Giancarlo Stanton and the fish. Two nothing. He now also is the first Marlin ever to have 50 RBIs, 51 to be exact, before the month of June. Wow. There's a slider. He just missed the curveball. The slider was belt high. This is the toughest ballpark in baseball to hit it out straight away center. And Stanton is making it commonplace right now. Yeah, there's an old term. You don't hear the term pepper anymore. He plays pepper with the batter's eye in straight away center field. For Tehran, that's the ninth home run that he's given up. And Rich Stanton had been just one for 12 against Julio Tehran before that AB. So a 2 nothing start for Miami. McGee up there. And the 1-0 pitch. A 
he shoots a fly ball down the right field line. It's a long run for Hayward. And it's into the seats. It's amazing. When you watch it on Phantom Cam, watch the head, watch everything. The head is still. Look at the eyes. And you don't see any wobble on the bat. You know, on Phantom Cam, when a guy doesn't hit a ball well, see that bat, the barrel kind of wobble. Here's a 1 1. The exit speed off the bat, it was a breaking ball, so 107 miles an hour. Oh, oh, he just missed it. That's going to end up about 430 feet, I would guess, up in the bushes. I'm going in that 440 territory. Above the tall wall in center field. McGee follows it back to the screen. Casey McGee can hit home runs. One of the questions about McGee, people have said, oh, well, wait a minute, what happened to his power? We've seen him hit the top of the wall in this ballpark three times. The other night, he hit a ball off the wall in left field in D.C. And had a single because the bags were loaded and he hit it on a line and everybody had to freeze. That was a big hit in the 10th inning. Counts one and two. You get a sense that McGee is going to have a week to 10 days where all of a sudden three or four home runs pop out of his back. You know the thing that I've really noticed though and with two strikes he's doing it a little bit and certainly with guys on base he changes his approach and his approach is just all right make contact get that base hit. This one ends up in shallow right Hayward is there and he makes the catch and there are two outs. And that'll bring Garrett Jones to the plate. Well, Julio Tehran with an ERA of 177 coming into this ball game. Here's the scouting report. Well, he has that smooth, easy delivery. He repeats it. That's why he has success. That's why he's in the strike zone a lot. And a good slider, but he he did not throw a good slider to Stanton on the home run. Only Adam Wainwright and Jeff Smarja have better ERAs coming into play tonight than Tehran. The number that just doesn't add up, Tommy Hutt, nine home runs given up so far this year. Now, obviously, a lot of them are solo shots. That a two run shot to stand. A lot of times, a guy who's in the strike zone a lot, guys feel pretty comfortable at the plate hitting against him. And as you see, when he makes a mistake, as he did to Stanton, he'll get hurt. And he doesn't walk many people, just 19 walks in 77 innings. That slider, as you saw there, he will throw to lefties, and that's where he wants to put it, out and in. See what Jones gets. The one two coming. Ground ball, Estella to his left. And gets the out at first. The opener of a three game series, two first place teams to set the tone. How about 430 feet of Giancarlo Stanton?
top. Giancarlo Stanton's 16th home run of the season, a two run shot. Another mammoth blast to center here. And it's 2 0. Marlins on top. Evan Gaddis, Chris Johnson, Andrelton Simmons. Just start voting right now. Get the votes in for Stanton to start the All Star game. He wasn't in the top three at last count. Let's get him in the top three. Evan Gaddis climbs in. <laughs> Gaddis takes a strike. Gaddis, the full time catcher for the Braves. Of course, it still is odd to see Brian McCann in Yankee pinstripes, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Hey, you know, you, you watch a game, you flip around, there's McCann, and you wonder who is that left handed hitter? Off to a little bit of a slow start, starting to hit the ball better with the Yankees is Brian McCann. Breaking ball strike. You saw Gaddis get up on his toes there. Watch the reaction. It locked him up. He got fooled. Good pitch by Kohler. Gaddis been playing with a sore wrist, and that isn't going to feel real good to Gaddis or the baseball, I think. And Gaddis is aboard. Big day of baseball. On Fox and Fox Sports 1, Marlins and Braves, a 4-10 start tomorrow. And it's a Saturday spectacular as well. All you can eat seats, post-game concert with B.O.B. It's a live concert on the West Plaza. It's a multi-platinum hip-hop superstar, B.O.B. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. So 4-10 tomorrow, Tommy Hunt. Here's Johnson. Kohler throws a strike. Chris Johnson coming off a terrific year last year. Has yet to match those numbers. Boy, much respect to Evan Gaddis, who doesn't wear batting gloves, doesn't wear a big pad on the left arm, didn't flinch when hit by the pitch, didn't rub it. El Oso Blanco. Johnson nice one into right field. Stanton is there and makes the catch. Stanton had the spectacular night the other night in D.C. in right field. And made two terrific plays. Two key plays. Yeah, you know, there were some tremendous defensive plays in that series in that ball game. How about the one Derek Dietrich made? Had a lot of people talking, backing up first base on the bunt by Span, the errant throw by Mike Dunn, and right there for it was Dietrich. That could have been the ball game right there. Oh, I think it was the ball game. Yeah. I think a couple of runs come by, and the Marlins never lived to see the tenth. Andrelton Simmons. Simmons takes down low. Simmons really established himself last year as the best defensive shortstop in the game. Hit just 248 last year. Checks in at 271. Fastball, fly ball, Stanton in pursuit. That's hit well. Warning track, reaches, got it. Up against the wall. Gaddis retreats to first. Just like that on cue. John Carlo, we're talking about his plays in D.C., goes back and makes a nice play there. Made it look fairly easy, but this ball carried a lot off the bat of Andrelton Simmons. Boy, a leap right as you... You get there, you've taken a few steps on the warning track, so you know you're real close to that fence. I hate to keep using football analogies with Stanton because he was such a terrific high school player, but he's like a, a big tight end who's faster than you think, has good feet, takes good angles. Maybe the Vernon Davis of right field. So if what you're saying is that had he chosen that career path, his position may have changed yes. when he got to the NFL. Without a doubt, it yeah. may have changed at USC when Pete, <laughs> Pete Carroll recruited him. He was a wide receiver cornerback. After a few trips to the workout room and the weight room, 
<laughs> USC and training table breaking ball misses outside and it's 2 and 0 to Tommy Lestella. The Braves have had their issues at second base. The continued struggles of Dan Ugla, Tyler Pasternicki didn't sparkle. And so Lestella, who was having a nice year in AAA, the 25 year old out of uh, Montvale, New Jersey, takes a fastball up and it's 3 0. They even had some starts from Romero Pena at second base. So that has been an issue. And for Dan Ugla, Ugla right now hitting 177. Kohler lost him. Hey. And so Tehran comes up. Gaddis proceeds to second. That's one of those you try so hard to throw strikes, you can't throw strikes. And Tom Kohler knows as well as anybody. A guy playing in his third major league game who's probably not going to hurt you with a long ball. You got to throw him strikes. Well, he threw him four balls. Now if the pitcher gets out of the way as opposed to leading off next inning. As you can see, Tehran is not an accomplished hitter. The young Colombian takes a strike. And it's 0 1. The Braves have absolutely dominated the Marlins coming into this season over the last three, four years. In Miami, in Atlanta. Last year, Atlanta took 13 of 19, but it's flipped. Obviously, a long way to go, but Miami has won four of six so far this year. Kohler checks. 1 1 coming. You know, it's really interesting when you, you see the Marlins leading for second in the National League in runs and batting average. Number two to the uh, Rockies. Then you look at the Braves. They're 12th in the National League in batting average and 13th in the league in runs. And I think for the Marlins, the, the other numbers that impress slugging percentage, second, on base percentage, second. <laughs> Struck him out. Kohler gets through the second. He punches out Tehran. Miami has a 2 0 lead. The search for the next Fox Sports Florida girl is underway. Are you a passionate Florida sports fan? You could join Annalie and Jordana in representing the Sunshine State's best sports teams on our networks. Our networks, Tommy Hutton. Submit your application today at foxsportsflorida.com slash girls. Tell us why you deserve to be the next Fox Sports Florida girl. Rich, are, are you and I involved in the uh, interview process for that? No, we're far removed. Julio Tehran gave up a 
monster two run homer to John Carlos Stanton in the first. Tom Kohler has been able to uh, survive a pair of base runners in both the first and the second inning. So a two nothing game in what should be a very entertaining weekend series here in Miami with the Marlins and the Braves both at 28 and 25. Both sitting atop the East. Braves off to the uh, quick start to come back to the pack. The Nationals by the way are two under and two and a half back. Behind both the Braves and the Marlins with the Mets three back and the Phillies four back. Salt to Lamacchia takes a fastball. For a strike the Mets are actually in Philly. And on top of Philly. Three nothing in the bottom of the second. And the Nationals are hosting Texas and Texas has an early two nothing lead. <laughs> First pitch was a called strike, though it was off the radar. Checkers bring you Fox Tracks. The one thing about Tehran, we talked about two starts ago, he had that shutout on May 20th. He threw 128 pitches. They were pretty careful with him. His next time out, he went six shutout innings against the Rockets. So that shutout streak was broken. On the long Giancarlo home run. Time to tweet your photo using the hashtag FL Fan Photo. It's a chance to have it shown in an upcoming telecast. It's brought to you by AT&T. We are not involved in that selection process either. They just never ask, Rich. They just never ask. We're more than happy to help. Ozuna swings and misses. They had a high fastball. And it's 0-1. Marcelo Zuna in the seventh spot has 32 runs driven in and nine home runs. Ozuna an RBI single on the Wednesday night win in DC. Kind of an odd stay in Washington, DC. The Marlins won on Monday. The Nationals called Tuesday night's game pretty early when it was raining at game time and it stopped raining at eight and then the Marlins came back and won Wednesday with somewhat of a depleted bullpen you see the most RBI at home Marlins have been a very good home team they have started to become a pretty good road team Miami has won five of the last seven road games I think rich the, the interesting thing about Ozuna and he has hit in other parts of the lineup, but for a good part, number seven. He's just out of the top 10 in the National League with 32 RBIs. But you start looking at the other hitters. They're all cleanup guys, the guys at the top of the order. Puig's here, Goldschmidt, Tulowitzki, Morse, of course, Giancarlo leading with 51. Upton, Morneau. So they're all guys who are middle of the lineup guys. Ozuna to right. It brings Hayward into the corner. And he makes the catch. And before Echeverria arrives, we are involved in this. And that's the legal portion of the telecast. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority. The Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Counts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Marlins. Here's Echeverria. Phantom cam swing. Marcelo Zuna. Remember we had that shot of Giancarlo. Look at the eyes. Same thing. This time he just gets under it a little bit. When you slow it down to that speed. Phantom cam, I'm guessing, is what, like 5,000 frames a second? Here's the 1 0. You rarely see a hitter's eyes track the ball right off the bat. They lose sight of the ball 
just in front of the plate. I would have loved to have had Phantom Cam in the days of Ted Williams because Ted Williams used to say that he could see the ball hit the bat. But you saw in those two shots that Stanton and Ozuna didn't have the eyes right on the bat. Echeverria bangs it out in the center field. Big turn. Got to be careful because the pitcher is coming up. And the last thing you want to do is get thrown out at second and have Kohler lead off. Well, good job by Echeverria to continue the inning and allow Kohler to bat. Phantom Cam again. Well, you know what? He's as close He's as, as we've close. seen. His head comes down on it much more so than Stanton and Ozuna. Center fielder BJ Upton with lots of speed out there. And if you don't cut that ball off, Echeverria ends up at second base. All right, here's Kohler, a couple hits this year. Speaking of Ted Williams, there's a series. That opens that uh, Ted Williams would appreciate. The Texas Rangers are in Washington, D.C. It's like they've come back to town with their tails between their legs and said, We're sorry we left. Now there's a new ballpark. But it's the Nationals who are hosting them. The Rangers were the Washington Senators, and Ted Williams was their manager. When they left D.C. for Texas, I would mention a couple of early runs for Texas off Steven Strasburg. Freeman always very good and very quick with the glove tag, and you don't hear that often about a right-handed first baseman. Usually, it's the lefties that are quick with the glove. He's as good as it gets as a right-handed first baseman. He has not won a Gold Glove. Yet in his young career, but kind of see that in the future for Freddie Freeman. Oh, it busts his bat. La Stella on the first in time. And the Marlins are done here in the second. A Giancarlo Stanton home run. Standing up, 2 0 lead. Toyota trend days in first place since 1993. The Braves the most first place days in all of Major League Baseball. Third fewest are the Marlins only 237 days. The Marlins tied for first with the Braves what? What? opening this three game series. Dinner served. Giancarlo Stanton is homer, and the Marlins have a 2-0 lead. And 
Kohler. We'll get to Hayward, Upton, and Freeman. Well, cotton candy. Hopefully, they've already had dinner. You know, we talked about the uh, terrific fish tacos in San Diego. We forgot to mention it, the cotton candy out there. Good. Equally as good. Yeah. Good. Maybe not the best in baseball, but probably top six, top seven. Jason Hayward. Hayward a line drive single the first pitch that he saw back in the first. Kohler isn't going to show him that fastball again. He's a guy you wonder how long in, in his career he will be a leadoff guy. Man, it really sparked things for him. And he got going when Freddie Freddie Gonzalez put him in that spot last year. And he's starting to get going in that spot right now. He's starting to get on base at a much healthier clip. Almost 360 over the last uh, six weeks. Bouncer right side Jones a flip Kohler is there. And gets the out. But you just don't picture. Jason Hayward down the road. And, and he's only 24 now but you don't picture him hitting lead off his entire career. And I would think there are some broadcasters that say the same about Christian Yelich. For Miami at the top of their lineup. I think the, the moral of the story is and if. BJ Upton were hitting and getting on base. He'd probably be the guy in that leadoff spot. Not every team has the uh, the complete set. Like when when you were five, Tommy, you got a box of crayons. You had a you had one of everything. You had right? the complete set. That's why it's a, a really evident when you play a team like the Dodgers and uh, see the series that, that D Gordon had. Line shot and Jones is there. B.J. Upton has hit it hard twice. He singled in the first, and he lines out here. Good job by by Garrett Jones, number one, making the catch, but also nicely done on the part of Perry Hill and the, the coaching staff, having him positioned in the right place. Here is Freeman now, who struck out. We talked about his drought against Miami, and it, it continues with an 0 for 1 here. I think it, you know 60s 70s even early 80s teams everybody seemed to have a speedy leadoff guy and that's because the stolen base had more value put on it by general managers managers yeah the Vince Coleman's the Tim Raines that's starting to come back obviously with the absence of performance enhancing <laughs> drugs pitchers are not at all time advantage right now speed is one way to, to fight that. Breaking ball foul back to the screen. That's why many eyes are on the the other member of the Gordon family who is expected to be oh if not top five, number six, number seven, top ten for sure in the draft coming up. So Telemachia went right back to the Fastball that Kohler struck Freeman out, and that was the half crouched up, give it to me up above the letters fastball. Now, let's see what he wants to come back with. He's got the eye level changed a little bit from Freeman. Now he wants curveball. Kohler wants a fastball, and they go back to the breaking ball. Back to a cutter or slider. Didn't bite on the breaking ball. It's three and two. A strikeout. Actually, a couple strikeouts. A walk. A hit batter. Two singles to open the game. That's the, the line for Kohler so far. Fastball pounded foul. You've got to think, Tom, that the Braves are going to hit better than they're hitting. They're going to get on base. At a better clip than they're getting on base. Somewhat, but they they also are a high strikeout team. 
If they continue to pitch this way, they give themselves a chance. Beautiful pitch. Kohler, backdoor breaking ball. He has punched out Freeman twice. Miami opening this three gamer, a first place battle, a two nothing lead. Swept them with a huge offensive, uh, just an explosion. And someone asked Freddie Gonzalez if uh, he thought maybe the Marlins were stealing signs. Freddie actually went into about a five, ten minute talk about it. And uh, so that prompted the Geico quote from Steve Ciszek. Yeah, well, maybe that, hopefully that guy giving us the signals will be out there again for this series. So, no, it was, it was funny. I mean, you know, we, we kind of joked about it and everything, but obviously that wasn't going on. But, you know, it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be a great series and you know, just looking forward to it. Yep. Nobody out there, Tommy. Nope. Nobody there. Christian Yelich. A breaking ball. Even Freddie Gonzalez in the uh, Atlanta Journal Constitution today said that, and when Freddie actually was talking about it, he he was smiling, he wasn't serious, he was tongue in cheek. And Gonzalez admitted that his quotes kind of took on a life of their own. And I think even Freddie admitted once the Braves change their signs, as every team does when all of a sudden you think something's up. Well, especially when you have. A player on the other team, and in the case of the Marlins, Reed Johnson, who had been a brave. Justin Upton is there, makes a catch. You always have to think about, about changing the signs a little bit. But as Gonzalez said, he said, well, the first thing we did was change the signs. But once you change the signs, then you know that no one's stealing signs. Yeah, and usually when teams change signs, which happens, uh, I don't want to say often, but it happens during the season, it's usually not the entire sequence of signs it's usually the indicator is changed. Yelich a fly ball out. Lucas stands in. So a lot of times that indicator whatever sign is after the indicator is the sign that's on. So sometimes teams will just change that. It is worth noting that after the uh, the Braves were in Miami and were swept by the Marlins they then went home and were swept by the Giants in three and lost two of three to the Cardinals. So that uh, that series against Miami shook the Braves somewhat. They were 17 and seven when that three game series began. Well that was a point in time Lucas almost got himself extra bases. There's a point in time where the Marlins were six and a half games behind the Atlanta Braves. Well everybody was back. Remember the you know, the Nationals Kind of were spinning their wheels. And the Braves were 17 and 7.
Lucas takes down low. Ed Lucas getting the start. Decent numbers in a, a short history against Tehran. Mike Redmond playing a little bit of a hunch in the numbers, and it paid off. Lucas singled the right back in the first, and he scored easily when Giancarlo Stanton hit one a mile yeah, to center had, field. And now five for 12 against Tehran. And, and having some good takes, having a couple of good at bats. And the funny thing, Lucas against right handed pitching this year has scuffled four for 25. Against lefties, Lucas is 10 for 17. Lights out. Fastball up and in, and Lucas walks, and that's not what Tehran wanted to do. Just walk Lucas and bring Stanton up with a runner at first. This goes to my point. We'll watch this home run again because it was absolutely crushed. We haven't gotten any. Distance yet, but the slider was kind of flat out over the plate. Look at the ripples in his forearms <laughs> when he hits that ball as well. So here is Stanton, 16 homers. That's a, a good move, and Lucas is just back in. As you pointed out, Tommy, he's blown past the 50 RBIs. The first Marlin ever to get to 50 before June 1st. Ever. Want to know? So Stanton now 51 RBIs. American League leader is Nelson Cruz with 49. Saw Puig and Stanton, the two hottest in May. Chopper toward short Simmons, a wizard, gets it out there, and the turn is in time. Nice turn by Tommy Lastella. And Stanton bounces into a double play. Three innings in the books. Andrelton Simmons can pick it. 2 0 Miami. Craig Minervini. Craig? Well, thank you very much, uh, Rich, and with Charlie Partridge, the new head football coach over at FAU, but it's a return home yeah. because you grew up down here in Plantation. It's great to be back home. It's hard to believe it's taken me 22 years, but I'm back, man. It's good to be home. At Arkansas at Wisconsin, where you, you were regarded as a great Florida recruiter, so at least your travel won't be too bad now as the head coach. Well, finally, instead of stealing them up to the North Pole, I get to say, how about we stay home and let mom and dad see you play? What attracted you to Florida Atlantic, Charlie? I just a couple things. Howard Schnellenberger, I think so much of them, and then I know the potential of the program, and uh, it's shown nothing but that since I've walked in the door. I mean, the upside here, 
who knows what you could do. Yeah, I mean, a beautiful stadium, brand new on campus, an excited student body that's just waiting for someone to embrace them. And you guys all know the athletes that are in this area. Over 400 kids signed Division One last year at this time. From, are you from South Florida? State, from the state of Florida. State of Florida. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that unreal? Uh, you, Nebraska, I hate to bring it up, but it's August uh, 30th. That's your first matchup, huh? Yeah, we start at Nebraska. They're a good football team. We've been studying them on film. You know, uh, when I was at Wisconsin and they joined the Big Ten, I have some experience going there. Uh, so I won't be blown away by the, the atmosphere. It's great, but I get to teach the kids so that they're not wide-eyed. We just play good football. All right, you got the baseball uniform on. You had a chance to throw. I did. I threw. How did it go? It wasn't 50 cent material. I don't know if you saw that the other day. I did. They're not going to call me up to the majors, but I got it close enough to the plate where I'm not on your highlight reel tonight. <laughs> did you ever play any baseball when you were down here? No, a little T ball. That was enough for me. I went right to football. Well, good luck with the Owls. I know it's exciting. Is there one big challenge that you look at? To try and get you guys to the next spot you know what if we just continue to build what, what we're doing right now the momentum is all headed the right way i couldn't be happier with the direction of the program way to go thank you appreciate I think it. you picked the right sport <laughs> no doubt all right charlie partridge guys new coach of the owls and they do have a great stadium there in boca raton back to you yeah they do that's a program to watch i think in the next couple of years yeah it is a, it's a nice little stadium too up there right off glades Swing and a miss. Breaking ball. Justin Upton goes down. And Tom Kohler all of a sudden is on a nice little run. I tell you, when you when you watch Tom Kohler, and, and we showed at the beginning of the game, we showed some of the ups and downs. And literally, when he's up with the slider and curveball, he has trouble. But he's made good pitches tonight with the breaking pitches. The fastball's been live. Here's Gaddis now hit by a pitch. And that got him as well. <laughs> Gaddis didn't really dodge it. Didn't have to. That breaking ball was right on top of him. And it just ticked that left forearm. Pepsi 4 for 54 pack will get you in on the family Sunday on the first. Marlins and Braves at 110. Jewish Heritage Day at the ballpark. All fans get a Marlins recyclable tote bag courtesy of MLB Network. After the game, all kids run the bases in the Diamond Dash. And, and maybe a balloon animal by Tootie the Fruity. Go to, go to Marlins.com for more details. Kid Sunday, you can't have a Kid Sunday without uh, a clown. And that guy is a clown, Tom. He is a good one. No, oh, he's terrific. Uh, maybe we one can, of our favorites. Maybe we could get him to sing the theme to SpongeBob. I'd like to see if we could get. Uh, Get Tootie up in the booth. No, you don't. No, you don't. Out to right, Stan is there. He makes a catch. You know, the interesting part about Gaddis being hit twice, each time he was hit, he was hit with a breaking ball. I think the first time was a curveball, that time a slider just kind of stayed inside. Well, you and I have talked about Tom Kohler, who occasionally can be effectively wild. That's code. In baseball for having the willingness to pitch inside, isn't it? Yeah, and a lot of guys don't have that willingness, but Tom Kohler does. Here's Simmons now. Simmons nearly hit one out of here. A lot of pitchers would say years ago, you can have the, the outer half of the plate. Give me the inner half. Nowadays they say I'll have the inner half of Fox tracks. You get the outer half of Fox or the other quadrant of Fox tracks. Simmons takes outside. Simmons one of those uh, hitters who is aggressive early in the count. He doesn't walk a lot. He doesn't strike out a lot. He's punched out just 17 times. And he has walked. Six times. He's the toughest to strike out in the National League. He may be the toughest to walk. So you, you know when you pitch to him, he's going to put the ball in play. And all of a sudden, though, the count's 3-0. and oh. So this is a rare occurrence that Simmons gets to 3-0. and oh. Well, Kohler did the near impossible. He walked him. 
Simmons isn't going to know how to act. Just the seventh walk he has drawn. Tommy's mole at uh, hittrackeronline.com has uh, forwarded the home run distance for Stanton. 450. Yeah, it hit high up on that uh, batter's eye. What was the stat that we saw? I think it was at the start of the Washington series. Stanton has more homers of 440 plus feet. I believe it was five. So this one tonight would make it six. So I think he has more of those homers than any team has just he individually. Lestella who walked back in the second. Kohler can't find the plate suddenly. <laughs> and he comes back with a strike. Lestella comes to the to the major leagues with a, a reputation of a hard nosed player. Maybe not uh, blessed with the, the greatest of tools but out of uh, Coastal Carolina University. Started his college career at St. John's before transferring to Coastal Carolina. The count is one and two. His parents were at Fenway, and he was able to present his family with the uh, baseball from his first hit. What a thrill being able to watch your son play his first major league games at Fenway Park. He did not have a great defensive night last night. We showed that early. That Ball that died behind second base and then the drop of the throw. Which allowed the. Winning run to score. And Freddie Gonzalez talking to the media said hey, you know what for, for the young player. We're going to have to live with that. And Stella. Is here because of his bat. And hopefully he'll be able to hold his own defensively. Kohler out front one and two. Gaddis at second, Simmons at first. Well, you think about the uh, Braves in their infield. They're set at third. Chris Johnson just signed a three year extension. Andelson Simmons isn't going anywhere. Neither is Freddie Freeman, who's locked in long term. So they're set everywhere except for that second base position. They still have money tied up in that second base position with this year and next year remaining on Dan Uglis contract. 2 2. Lestella just uh, trying to stay alive punches that one foul. Yeah, he, he just won't go away. He's fouled off a pretty good pitch. His numbers in the minor leagues are very, very impressive. He carries a career 322 average, 407 on base, 474 slugging. And that's good stuff for a guy that was drafted in 2011. Center field, Ozuna is there and makes the catch, and the Braves need two more in the fourth.
Presented by Lexus of Pembroke Pines. Lexus of Pembroke Pines, South Florida's fastest growing Lexus dealer. Price, service, selection. By Blue Bell Ice Cream. And by your South Florida Chevrolet dealer. Tom Kohler and Phantom King. Kohler right now shutting out the Atlanta Braves. And the Marlins go to work on Julio Tehran in the fourth. John Carlos Stan, a 450-foot homer, has provided the two runs for tonight. Just for Men brings you the player profile of Hits McGee. That's the nickname on his all-star button. RBI through May with the Marlins. A first-year Marlin. And then Moise Salou, Carlos Delgado through May have had better starts as a Marlin. And the amazing thing, look at Mike Jacobs at the bottom of that list. The amazing thing about that, I guarantee Delgado and Moise Salou had more than one home run. McGee does have a dozen doubles. He flied to right his first time up. Turns on one towards the line. Justin Upton over. And the count's one ball and one strike. It's out of reach. Phillies have a run. A.J. Burnett's pitching tonight, but the Mets have three off of A.J. And a 3-1 lead in the fourth. Nationals lead over Texas. is 3-2, bottom four in D.C. Ian Desmond has hit his tenth homer of the season. That was a three-run shot for Desmond. South Florida Honda dealers present Marlins live on Sunday. Greg Minervini, Jeff Conine will be game three. Tomorrow's game is on Fox Sports 1. A 4-10 start tomorrow on Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1, go to foxsports1.com. If you don't know where it is on your cable provider, I'm going to find it. Find it. The dream game box score for the Marlins. And Lucas a base hit in the first inning. And John Carlos Stanton promptly hit one in the bushes in center field. That's your in game box score. McGee up the middle in the center field, base hit. And even Angleton Simmons couldn't get to that one. Well, if he can, no one can. And even Simmons wanted to peek up at the scoreboard to see where that ball was. Garrett Jones now. He got Salta Lamaki to follow. Jones hooked a ground ball the first. We, we are being corrected by our good friend David Beerman. Seven home runs of 440 or more by Giancarlo. So seven of his 16 are at least 440 feet. Mm -hmm. Though he no longer has the longest home run hit this year. Who hit that? Mike Morse? Mike no. Morse has, has hit a couple of uh, gigantic home runs. Let me, let me, I'm efforting. I know, I know guys who have been hitting a lot of them lately are Edwin Encarnacion and George Springer. It's someone that uh, was a bit surprising when I saw it. Jose Altuve. That would be very surprising, Tommy Hutton. That would be cause for celebration. <laughs> A 
a strike to Jones. I mentioned George Springer, the Astros, youngster out of uh, University of Connecticut. Ten home runs in the month of May. He's hit seven in his last seven games. And last year, 37 between Double A and Triple A. So he's been a real spark for the Astros. Todd Frazier is the name I was looking for. Ah, okay. 485 feet on Friday night. And that's by one foot longer than Stanton's. Todd Frazier out of uh, Tom's River, New Jersey. Al Leiter, still the number one son out of Tom's River, though. Yeah, the Astros have won six in a row. Astros are playing in the civil rights game tonight against Baltimore. Tehran working on Jones 2 2. He's fouled out of play. Really an interesting alignment in the outfield. BJ Upton is straight away center. Right straight away. Justin Upton is almost playing Garrett Jones as if he were a right handed pull hitter. So he has a couple of huge gaps out there in left center and right center. Tehran puts Jones away and strikes him out. Third strikeout for the Atlanta right-hander. Saturday full day of Major League Baseball action. Marlins and Braves on Fox Sports 1. Baseball Night in America on Fox, Rays, and Red Sox. So we got the Marlins on Fox Sports 1, and then later on in the night on Fox, the Rays and the Red Sox begins at 3.30 Eastern. On Fox Sports 1 and continues 7 Eastern on Fox. Well, remember that rough stretch Salt the Lamakia had on the West Coast. They broke out with a four hit game. Right now, Salty in a 0 for 11 with six strikeouts. He's in that kind of stretch. Slovakia right center field. Hayward calls for it and makes the catch. So both pitchers have settled down since that first inning. Tehran gave up the uh, Lucas single to Stanton last. And the only two hits the Braves have were back to back singles from Hayward and Upton to lead off the game. Here now is Osuna who's flied to right. Brave started this road trip in Boston. It was cold in Boston. Barnes got a little bit of that in Washington on Wednesday. Ozuna fouls it off after this series. The Marlins have their two and two just like the Braves just had their two and two with Boston. The Marlins have their two and two with the Rays. It's kind of an odd uh, twist in the schedule. Four straight against the Rays, three on the road against the Cubs, and then two at Texas for Miami. A strike. You were reminding me, Rich, because I wasn't wasn't sure. And that happens quite often. That those games in uh, in Chicago at Wrigley Field. Or afternoon games. Check that time on, on there. I believe they're either two o'clock or three o'clock starts Chicago time. Three. Strike three call. And Julio Tarad strikes out Ozuna. Leadoff single by Casey McGee. He never left first. 
Four innings have passed. Two nothing, Miami. Battle for first place for the weekend in the East. South Florida Lexus dealer standings. I would say first place. Marlins and Braves 28 25. Washington two and a half back. Mets and Phillies in the basement of the East. And for the Marlins. That's uh, rarefied air to breathe. The Marlins have been last place finishers in the division their last three seasons. 2010, the Marlins finished in third. They were 80 and 82. The last winning season for the Marlins, 2009, 87, and 75. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? Well, Rich, you said it. Rarefied air is indeed the case here. First place. This late in the season is the one third pole tonight and believe it or not the Marlins history as Tehran punches one to right. No catch. No, no catch. Base hit. Scooped up there by Stanton. This is the fourth latest date in Marlins history that they've actually been in first place. May 30th 2014 the best ever was 2004 as late as June 27th. When they were 40 and 35, the Marlins have never finished in first place. You may have seen a report a couple of years ago. They were 31 and 23 around June 3rd and 4th, and they were even in, in terms of games back with the leader Washington. But there were percentage points technically three percentage points behind Washington. It was 574 to 577, so not officially in first place a couple of years ago. In Ozzie Keen's first years, they had a chance to turn it here, and they do. That, Four, might six, be, wow. that might be challenged. Hayward came across the bag. Freddie Gonzalez looking out. Today for a big guy, Jason Hayward really gets up that line quick. That's pretty much a routine double play ball, but he makes it close and maybe challengeable. Strong throw by Echeverria. Good feed from Ed Lucas. Watch the ball. Ooh, that's close. Ball in back of the glove. Hayward's still kind of wandering out around the first base coach's box. Well, I don't think Freddie Gonzalez is out in time. He's yeah. got, got 30 seconds to be out. Well, and all of a sudden, Hayward was waved into the dugout. Carlos Tosca got the official word from the video room. I would suspect the Braves had a more definitive look than that. Of course, in the video control room in each clubhouse, the equipment is identical. All 30 clubs have the same stuff and they get all the looks from both teams telecasts all the camera angles just like the umpire group in New York has and so whoever watched that video in the 30 seconds probably looked at two or three views 
and determines he was out. Yeah, the the rooms themselves may not be identical, but the uh, the monitors and all the looks they are. I mean the Marlins video room where Colin McRae and Pat Shine take residence could be an ultimate man cave. It's gorgeous. Another walk by Kohler. If there's one bit of an alarm bell tonight, it's the walks. Well, you got three walks and two hit batters. So there are five base runners right there. And here's Freeman. Home. Kohler has handled twice. He struck him out swinging in the first, looking in the third. Safe. Close. Kohler bounced off the mound. Jones applying the tag. <laughs> they should just put a headset on the uh, bench coach. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, just like at Burger King. <laughs> you know, the little microphone coming out. Absolutely. Yeah, like we have. Well, we talked about the two guys that will run. The Braves, as a team, have 26 stolen bases. Hayward and Upton have 16. They each have eight. So they're the two main guys that'll go. Leaning. And that was close. Kohler trying his best to sell it. Much like when a pitcher thinks he's thrown strike three and takes a step towards the dugout. On those last two close ones, he's kind of taking a step towards the Marlins dugout. He's leaning, but not running. He still has to, and he did. Still has to concentrate on making good pitches to Freddie Freeman. That was a good curveball there. Jay Upton back with the dive. Change up. Coors cold hard fact. 0 for 26. Longest offer in his career against any team. Yet he came into this game four for nine in his career against Kohler. He's four for 11 now. O2 and a quick move over to first. I wonder if the Marlins will see Jeff Samarja in Chicago or if he'll be gone by then. No, I think he'll he'll still be there. You know you, you think about a guy like Samarja more toward the. Uh, the trading deadline. But you never know. Toronto has been one of the teams rumored to be interested in a guy like Samarja. James Shields could be another target in Kansas City. Swing and a miss. Salta Lamakia takes it out and tags Freeman out, who has struck out three times tonight against Tom Kohler.
450 feet. The difference in the game. Marlins and Rays, Monday the 2nd, 7 10. Here at Marlins Park, all you can eat seats, just $22, including unlimited KMB Franks, Nachos, Peanuts, Popcorn, Pepsi, and Aquafina Water. South Florida Heroes Monday, presented by GovX. For tickets, go to Marlins.com. Danny Echeverria against Julio Tehran. Save a, a hanging breaking ball in the first. Tehran has pitched pretty well in this ball game. Well, we talked about Echeverria, but Tehran pounces, throws, and gets him. Good reactions. We've told you Tehran, a very good fielder. We've seen his quick move over the first. Actually got a base hit tonight. Snap it over 21. But he comes off the mound quickly. Not a bad bunt. A little more up the line is preferred, but just a good play by Tehran. Now we talked about the three-game series, but the Marlins overall in their six games against Atlanta, four and two on the year against the Braves. Kohler thinks bunt. Takes fastball. It's one and zero. Oh. Tehran has struck out four. He's walked one. Four hits, two runs. Kohler five innings, three hits, three walks, two hit Gattises, and uh, five strikeouts. <laughs> or is it Gattai? The yeah, would be double. Well, yeah, plural. Gattai. So the difference in these two clubs: the Marlins are 15 and 11. The month of May. The Braves in May 11 and 16. And the descent. For the Braves started with that three game sweep at the hands of the Marlins. They were 17 and 7 coming into that series. Here's the 2 2. That one foul back to the screen. Is there any word as if uh, Mrs. Kohler is. Able to come off the DL and the play on the Monday in the wives softball game, the Rays, Marlins uh, wives softball game. It's a big charity event. Ashley Kohler was the hitting hero for the Marlins last year. A couple of a uh, couple of home runs, if I remember. She was the Giancarlo Stanton of that game, routinely going out to the deepest part of the trough. She's also due sometime in July, I believe. So, be a tough call. I don't know if they allow pinch runners or ghost runners. Or however, you might term it. Kohler lines it right field. Hayward is there and he makes the catch. Two outs here in the fifth. Christian Yelich coming to the plate. I think. I think the uh, the girls have been looking uh, looking good at practice, working on the fundamentals. Yeah, it just struck out and flied out. Aside from the Stanton ball, the center, there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, offense on either side. Both teams have turned double plays. Marlins have actually turned two double plays. And you can see why Tehran is so good. He pounds the zone. Efficient. Doesn't walk many. And you marvel at the Braves ERA and their rotation. Because remember they took two Tommy John hits. Chris Medlin and Brandon Beachy. Of course, they've still got 
Johnny Venters, who had uh, Tommy John surgery about a year ago. Well, they have uh, Mike Miner back, Gavin Floyd, who they signed. Think too about a guy like Tehran that you you read things and you always appreciate a, a pitcher who number one has good stuff, but when you read things about him, he has a good makeup, tremendous work ethic. You know, I forgot about Corey Gearin. He also had Tommy John surgery. So four Braves with Tommy John surgery. And how about the latest out of the bullpen for the Dodgers? Chris Withrow. The Marlins saw uh, in their series against the Dodgers, hard thrower out of Don Mattingly's bullpen. He will have Tommy John surgery. Gallich rifles one to left, and it's caught there by Justin Upton. One, two, three, go the fish. Five quick innings, two nothing. Miami. In Miami tonight, two first place teams battling atop the National League East. The Braves, the Marlins. With Tommy Hutton, Craig Munavini, Jeff Conine, Rich Waltz with you at Marlins Park. John Carlos Stanton has hit one in the bushes, 450 feet from home plate. A two run shot, that back in the first. And that's all the scoring. Tom Kohler, fastball that Justin Upton fouls back. And the sixth inning is underway. Upton's 0 for 2. Evan Gaddis, Chris Johnson will follow for the Braves. Who have dropped four in a row? Not for the lack of a pop from Justin Upton, though. Upton having a terrific year. A dozen doubles, 13 homers, driven in 33. Now remember, before they lost those uh, four games in a row to the Red Sox, the Red Sox had lost 10 in a row. We were looking at the lineup at the outset of the ball game for the Braves, and you just scratch your head. And, and we talked about the, the batting average and, and how low it's been for Atlanta near the bottom of the National League. I mean, you've got Freeman has nine homers, 15 doubles. Justin Upton, 12 doubles, 13 homers. Evan Gaddis has clubbed 10 home runs. But that's about it. Hayward has started to get hot. He has five homers. From the leadoff spot, the Braves ancillary pieces, so to speak, just haven't done it. 
Chris Johnson hasn't hit like he hit last year. Ugla has hit his way out of the starting lineup. B.J. Upton continues to search at the plate. We well, have a guy like like Chris Johnson who battled for the uh, batting title last year. He finished second, hitting uh, 321. And Johnson in the 250s with just 13 RBIs, two home runs, 13 RBIs. One bit of news if you're just happening by is that Henderson Alvarez is planning on making his next start. Sounds like Alvarez will go on Tuesday and that Randy Wolf will join the rotation and throw Monday. Yeah, I believe Alvarez had a uh, bullpen session either today or he's going to do it tomorrow, but he seems to feel all right. He, he said that after the game in, in Washington. And of course, Mike Redman and Marlins manager, when Alvarez mentioned to him that his elbow felt tight, if you're the manager and you hear that from your starting pitcher, you have to take him out of the ball game. Absolutely. Absolutely, especially with all the things that have gone down this year with uh, injured elbows. In other elbow news, as long as we're on the subject, Carter Caps will get a second opinion on that sore right elbow that he has. Another walk by Kohler. He's been able to dodge those so far. This is the guy he's hit twice. Well, you dodge those, but uh, you hope they don't uh, come back and bite you. Into right field, Gaddis. And the Braves are set up first and second. Because the other thing the walks do, they, they just make that pitch count get a little bit higher. Break the ball was up. Gaddis, uh, first time, gets to swing the bat, didn't get hit. Found that hole over there on the right side. Kohler pitched around first and second. Nobody out in the first inning. He had a pair of runners in the second. A pair of runners in the fourth. Got a double play ball. To erase a base hit in the fifth. And here he is in the sixth. Trying to hold on to a two nothing lead. With runners first and second. Nobody out. Johnson. Pulls one foul. Ideally, and I'm sure this is going through Mike Redmond's mind. Ideally, with the score the way it is, he would love to be able to get Tom Kohler through seven innings. But right now, he just has to get him through this sixth inning with a couple of men on and nobody out. And until the Marlins. Middle relief gets settled. And as Mike Redmond said, talking to Craig Minervini, the, the Marlins are very thin in the bullpen right now. And until it gets settled, and by settled, it's guys start improving or the Marlins find a fit from within or without to bolster that pen. That really puts the onus on the young starters to get into the seventh. Oh, two. Ground ball, it's going to find left field and a base hit. And the Braves will send Upton and he will score. So Atlanta's on the board and it's 2 1. Well, and all of a sudden, this inning, Kohler has left some pitches out there to hit. That breaking ball, the first one to Gaddis was out over the plate. And this, an 0 2 breaking ball, middle of the plate. I'm sure he wanted to bury it down and away. He didn't get it there. And a good hitter like Chris Johnson is going to take advantage of it. Braves fifth hit their first run. And now Simmons. Who is a guy that uh, you got to be careful with early. 
if you're trying to get a strike and get ahead. Because he has the power to knock it out. Line drive out there, out there, double play. Lucas to Echeverria. And I tell you, I like the thinking of Echeverria. He was thinking triple play. <laughs> Well hit ball but the reactions by Lucas the pick the flip to double off Gaddis and then Etch was maybe even thinking about going to first base. That is the third double play behind Kohler tonight and here is La Stella. Pop up Lucas. And he's there and makes the catch. Eddie Lucas runs it down. Atlanta is on the board, but Miami has a one run lead. Introduce the all new Miami Marlins Fan Express first class coach bus VIP seating up to 50 of your closest friends. Just email groups at Marlins.com or go 305 480 2523 for more information on how you and your friends can travel in style to see the fish at Marlins Park. How about the way Rich that Tom Kohler got out of that inning? The double play, the line drive double play, and then on the next pitch, getting Lestella on the pop fly. So with two pitches, he got the three outs and just helped that pitch count. Here's the double play. This is a bullet off the bat of Simmons. Lucas in the right spot and good reaction actions by Echeverria too. And the pop fly and the next pitch. And hey, just like that. And making friends. There you go. You want a souvenir? All right. Ed wanted to make sure there were three outs. Lucas has been on twice. He has singled and walked. Giancarlo Stanton and Casey McGee to follow. Now you can't always plan it this way. But think about what Mike Redman said before the game. Yeah, you get Ed Lucas in and he always seems to make something happen. Well, you just mentioned he's single, he's walked, he scored on Stanton's home run. He's been involved in double plays. Caught that pop foul in the inning. Low strike. Wasn't a strike. Lucas, uh, in the Ivy League, do they get on umpires? Or are they just give them that stare? I think they get on them, but the conversation's a little different. 
it might be. Very intellectual conversation. That's right, Columbia is down here in the uh, Coral Gables Regional. Texas Tech beat them in a walk-off. I think what they do is they give the umpire like a, a brain teaser. Two pitch. And Lucas strikes out. Tehran picks up strikeout number five. And here comes Stan. Stan's homer to center, 450 feet. He's driven in 51 runs this year. 16 home runs total. Here's a look. AT&T Rewind. Infield shifted somewhat for Stanton. A big rip. Had a fastball and he fouls it back. If you're on the infield with Stanton, the hitter, you want to be as deep as you can. Steps out from day one of spring training. Very different Giancarlo Stanton. Stanton showing up early to spring, healthy, engaged, smiling, relaxed. And that really set the tone for the entire training camp. Of 2013, I think everybody was shell shocked in the aftermath of 2012. Broken back. Freeman makes the catch. So two outs. Here's McGee, who is one for two. Dominic Brown has homered. A three run shot. For the Phillies. Gets the uh, Phillies a little bit closer to the Mets. Bottom of the fifth, 5 4 Mets. Nationals 4 2 over the Rangers, bottom six. Well, we talked about the consistencies of uh, Julio Tehran. One more out, and it'll make it 11 of 12 starts where he's gone six or more innings. Tehran has retired nine straight. He goes one, two, three through the sixth. Two, one in Miami.
standing up right now. Tom Kohler, up, down, all around. Go back to the seventh in the start against the Mets. Eight innings was terrific. Not so good against the Dodgers. Remember, he got knocked around in that game. Bounced back in San Francisco and was terrific. Didn't give up a run. And then the night, the roof and the windows were open. And Mark Reynolds clubbed a couple homers against them. Boy, everything was flying out that night. And then tonight, you look at the numbers, the, the only little glitch on the line, the four walks, a couple of hit batters. But other than that, Tom Kohler's made some, some tremendous pitches. And I think this is a real key here this inning to get through this seventh inning. It makes it a little bit easier for Mike Redman to set things up in the next couple of minutes. And he's got Tehran to open the inning. Hayward and B.J. Upton to follow. And Kohler gets strike one. That's a fair ball. Down the line it goes. Stan picks it up. Tehran around first, and he's in at second. And the Braves get an unexpected two-hit night from Julio Tehran, who was just two for 25 coming into the ballgame. Well, with his base hit in the fifth inning, that broke an 0 for 21. Pitcher can hit that pitch. It's up. He sees it. It's out over the plate. Boy, mistakes to Tehran and the walks. If uh, Tom Kohler looks back at this game, that's uh, what he'll be reminded of. He dodged one, certainly, in the sixth on the line drive double play by Simmons. And Hayward takes a breaking ball for ball one. Hayward tonight, one for three. He's hit in five straight. Mike Dunn in Miami's bullpen, the former Brave. You know, Dunn possibly up for Freeman, but Kohler has struck Freeman out three times tonight. That's trouble in the gap, and this game's tied. To the wall it goes. Yelich picks it up. And headed for third is Hayward, and he's in there. The Marlins lose the lead, and they give up third base. And it's 2-2, and the Braves are 90 feet away from being on top. Well, Hayward has been swinging a hot bat lately. Two hits tonight. We talked about it early in the game. And into that gap in left center, Yelich couldn't cut it off. Had a little bit of trouble right there as the ball gets through his legs. And because of that, Hayward alertly took third. Infields in. B.J. Upton. Pop up. Out of play. So they may have ruled that a double. And then an error on Yelich allowing Hayward to go to third. Yeah, there's an error that just popped up on the scoreboard. Yeah. So Hayward gets the RBI. BJ Upton trying to follow with one. He swings and misses. If you're Kohler, you're thinking strikeout right now. You've got a guy that by volume is a great candidate for a strikeout. Oh, two. Well, the whole thing that started this inning, though, the, the double by the weak inning pitcher, Julio Tehran. out Chris Hatcher the right hander is up go 
Miller keeps hoping that B.J. Upton will go out of the zone. Upton, to his credit, has not. And the count's now two and two. Driven to left, Yelich comes in, diving catch on his feet, run will score. And Atlanta has the lead. BJ Upton knocks in Jason Hayward. And just like that, it's 3 2. There's life in that Atlanta dugout. They haven't had a whole lot of it over the last four days. Good effort, good catch by Kristen Yelich to come in and Keep his concentration and hang on, but even popping up, no throw to the plate with the speed of Hayward. And you give Upton credit, who is a strikeout candidate, as you talked about, but Kohler couldn't put him away. Freeman now. This is the type of game you'll look back on with the way the Braves hit the ball against Kohler in the sixth inning. If Mike Redmond had more confidence in that bullpen, you might have seen somebody from the bullpen pitching this inning. But he doesn't, and he wanted to get one more out of Tom Kohler. That's a good point. And there is just enough. To A lot of times you'll say, okay, well, he's thrown six. The pitch count's all right, but they had some good swings in the sixth inning. Even that double play, hard line drive. Gaddis and Johnson had hits. Simmons hit the line drive double play. Nothing's for the Marlins now shift from holding the lead to trying to come back against. Either Tehran, who's only at 89 pitches, or the back of the Braves bullpen, which, when supported by defense, is pretty good. Last night, that didn't happen. I think last night in their game with Kimbrell, he, he had gone about five or six days without pitching, so he's pretty fresh. Ron, calm, cool, collected, and has a lead now. High, high drive, left field, Yelich back, and makes a catch in the middle of the warning track. But Atlanta strikes twice, and now leads at 3 2.
Marlins and Rays on Tuesday. Raymond. That's the third. It's at 710. Half price tickets on the Lexus Legends level. Baseline reserve. Bullpen reserve. Home run porch with the Miami Herald half price Tuesdays. For full details, pick up the Tuesday edition of the Miami Herald or El Nuevo Herald. Marlins and Rays on Tuesday. You know, we saw Tom Kohler the last couple of innings give up some hits, make a few mistakes. On the other hand, Julio Tehran, since that fourth inning single from Casey McGee, he's retired nine straight. Kohler, not the happiest guy right now. Jones takes down low. One of the things that Tehran has done this year, despite having the third best ERA in the National League, is give up home runs. Nine of them. This is start number 12. Jones steps out. And the Marlins have some power hitters this inning. Jones, Sotomaki, and Ozuna. Swings and misses in Atlanta on the 21st of April. Garrett Jones. Ball in the dirt. Atlanta is such an interesting team statistically. Tommy talked about the fact that the Braves hitters have struck out more than anybody in the National League. Well, Braves pitchers have struck out. More hitters than anybody in the National. So we talked about the Atlanta ERA. Atlanta coming into the game with a team ERA of 2.96. Giants are next on that list, then the Nationals, then the Cardinals. Jones to center. BJ Upton makes the catch, and there's one out here in the seven. Well, the Fightings have come back to tie the Mets 5 5. That game is only. Bottom of the fifth in Philly. National 6 to 2 have stretched their lead over Texas. Bottom seven at Nationals Park. John Farrell and I believe his bench coach have also been ejected. And now the third base coach. So the umpires in Boston have ejected. John Farrell and two of his coaches. Well, I know early in that game, David Price hit Big Poppy. <laughs> and you know what they say at Fenway, you know hit Big Poppy early in the game. And that started some of it, I think. I haven't followed the Rays and the Red Sox close enough to know if there was bad blood, if something had happened between. I know the they had the, uh, the situation in St. Pete at the trop right. with uh, Unel Escobar. But why would you hit Big Poppy for that? Uh, you know, you, you, you find ways. <laughs> but Burke Bate hops in the game for the Red Sox now. Breaking ball misses outside to Ozuna. Have been tossed in that ball game, which is 2 1 Tampa Bay in the bottom of the sixth. AJ Ramos, Chris Hatcher.
Ozuna fouls it back. Ozuna has struck out fly down. Julio Tehran has been terrific. Since giving up the two run homer to John Carlos Stanton. Yeah, he's, he's pitched well at home. He's pitched well on the road. His ERA at home is 1.24, but even on the road, it's uh, under three. Ozuna asks for time and steps out. It's number 100 coming from 23 uh, year old Colombian. Yeah, one of those runs off Tom Kohler last inning was unearned. Because remember, Hayward got to third on the error. Ball that got uh, through Christian Yelich and then scored on the sacrifice fly. Which, if he had been second, he wouldn't have scored. So that run unearned. Yeah, things are looking good early in the game with John Carlo taking a slider straight away center field, 450 feet. RBI's 50 and 51, home run number 16. In the sixth inning, Chris Johnson was able to get the Braves a little closer after walking a base hit. He singles in the left. That made it a two to one game. And then in the seventh inning, a Tehran double. And then all of a sudden, a Jason Hayward double. The ball scooted. Through Christian Yelich for an error, and he got the third, and scored on the sacrifice fly off the bat of BJ Upton. And that sacrifice line drive made it a 3 2 game. Chris Hatcher out of Miami's bullpen. We saw AJ Ramos up as well. But uh, Hatcher is in. The Marlins down a run. Evan Gaddis. Chris Johnson, Andrelton Simmons. Well, Hatcher trying to come back after a rough outing in D.C. in the sixth inning. Gave up a couple of hits. Gave up three runs, three hits, and three runs.
Gaddis. Both times hit on that left arm by Tom Kohler breaking balls and then singled in the sixth. You know, the San Diego Padres, and we've talked about this this year, are one of the teams in baseball that has never, ever hit for the cycle. And they haven't thrown a no hitter either. But one of those could change here. Here's the 0 1. Tommy Medica's agent has filed an appeal as you can for a scoring decision from Wednesday's loss to the Diamondbacks. And if it's overturned, a ball that Medica hit hard at Martin Prado that was ruled an error. If it's turned into a hit, it would be a single. He also tripled, doubled, and homered in the ball game. So, so that would be like a delayed cycle. Yeah. Bud Black said that the Padres team was going to file the appeal. Medica's agent actually did it on his behalf. So it's not like the Padres aren't in on this as well. It was a hard hit ball. I don't know, Tommy. I think first cycle, that, that may be something that keeps him from winning the appeal. Stanton is there, he makes the catch. Good pitch by Hatcher got in with a good fastball and tied up Gaddis just enough. I mean, don't you think if you want to be involved in the first cycle, which brings up a, another interesting scoring decision. Remember the little pop up on the was it Darvish had? Oh, the, yeah, the perfect game. That was a bad call and it was a bad call. It was ruled an error to keep the. Yeah, the right fielder and the second baseman converging and. One gave way to the other and it dropped, but nobody touched and that kept the no hitter and they called it an error initially, but they overturned they it. They overturned later. a big poppy hit the ball. That's right. Maybe that's why price threw out. Here's a one up. <laughs> I almost slipped that one by you, didn't I? <laughs> Anyways, it would have been my point is it would have been interesting had he completed the no hitter. Well, they actually, big poppy then broke it up with a legit, a more legitimate hit his next time up. But if he didn't break it up and they appealed it, if they overturned it, which they did, they made it a hit, would they have made it a hit to wipe That's out a, good a no hitter? They should have because it's always that play is always ruled a hit. Chris Johnson up. Johnson an RBI single in the sixth. Zuna in from center. And Johnson out number two in the eight. Andrelton Simmons comes up and our AT&T fan photo. Hashtag. FL fan photo. And let's see Tommy. Oh come on. Really. That's the it's, fan that's photo. not a fan. Those are fans. Again, we have. We, we How are, did that one slip by? We're not involved in the selection process. We we need to uh, get our people to get together with their people. Yeah, because we we get tweeted those photos. Oftentimes, when people tweet the photos, they put the hashtag FL fan photo on it, but they send it to at Fox Marlins, or I've even seen some come through my Twitter account. There are some terrific photos yeah. that that have not made air, Tommy Hunt. What's happened to those? We'll look into that. They're in a, a virtual wastebasket somewhere. It's an outrage. If you push delete, you can always get them back somewhere. It's always a trail. <laughs> Simmons fouls it off.
Braves bullpen has activity. Dan Jennings in the bullpen. You would imagine too they'll be careful with Tehran. We we talked about his uh, complete game 128 pitches two starts ago. He's He's at 102 pitches tonight. Simmons in the center. And a running catch by Ozuna. Now one, two, three, eight for Chris Hatcher. I think Carpenter. Got a 3 2 lead. It's never too late to download the MLB.com at the ballpark mobile app. Great features throughout the year. Check in through the app to earn free tickets. Download the free MLB.com at the ballpark app today. I don't know that Julio Tirad is going to finish this ball game as Romero Pena lost his cap. He was out there at second base. But Tehran has. Completed two games. He's actually got two shutouts this year. This not a shutout. It was odd. I mean, this jumped out of, of the notes. He's the first Braves pitcher to get two shutouts in a season since 2001. Wow! And that was Greg Maddox that did it. Would not have uh, would not have guessed that far back. I'll tell you another thing. In watching Tehran, you and I have read over the last week, two weeks, a lot of. Uh, articles about Tommy John surgery things to do for preventative uh, ways and in watching Tehran he falls in I don't know he may end up having it some someday I don't know but he falls into the category that you hear he's not a max effort guy and he's throwing fastballs it's a fair ball Johnson knocks it down Echeverria beats it out fastballs 93 94 he's not throwing some fastballs 87 88 and he repeats his delivery so you, you put all those things together you would say well this is an ingredient for a guy not to have it well the ball gets out of Chris Johnson's glove I'm guessing it'll be a, a base hit base hit had a lot of choices for Guys to pinch it, Reed Johnson, Jeff Baker, but it's going to be Donovan Solano in this case because there's a runner at first base. A lot of things Solano can do. Reed Johnson was in the on deck circle, but once Echeverria reached, Solano pops out. Good bunner, good speed at first. 
Ball in the dirt. And it was in front of Gaddis, and that prevented Echeverria from scampering to second. They'll etch with a couple of base hits tonight off Tehran. Got Yelich and then Lucas. That's close. You know, there have been two or three times tonight that Tehran has thrown over with Echeverria, the runner, who has not made a dive back to the bank. He's gone back feet first that way, and he's almost gotten picked off a couple of times. He's got to be careful. Miami down a run. Bottom eight. I always thought this was one of the tougher pinch hit assignments. Uh, to go up and be asked to uh, drop down a sacrifice. It's not easy to do. I think even harder when you're pinch hitting. Now the count's 0 2. I'm not sure. I, I thought the count was one ball and one strike. You know what? I did too. And it is. Home plate umpire Jerry Davis holding up one and one. Yeah, the scoreboard here in the ballpark. Which could change. I mean, you could go from. Sacrifice to maybe hit and run in a situation like this. The scoreboard in the ballpark has 0 and 2, and that's why Solano stepped out. Drops the bunt down, and it's a beauty. Tehran gets the out. And so Miami has a tying run in scoring position. And Yelich and Lucas will get a shot. Their fourth look at Tehran, unless. Freddy Gonzalez goes to the lefty, and guess what? Freddy is out. Tehran obviously would rather stay in. Of course, Yelich does quite well against lefties. Julio Tehran, a, a nice night tonight for the Braves. He exits in a one run game. That his bullpen can hang on to this 3 2 lead. Luis Avilon. Awesome. Fastball's a good curveball, good breaking ball from Avilon. You realize with Echeverria at second base, the only other runner the Marlins had at second base is when Stanton crossed second base on his home run. 
<laughs> Breaking ball. A strike to Yelich. We talked about Yelich against lefties. Three forty against lefties this year. Yelich drives one center field. Upton's got plenty of room. And Chavria has plenty of time to get to third. And he arrives there. Now let's see what Freddie Gonzalez does. I don't think he wants the right hander or the left hander to face Lucas. Uh, and the counter to that is that Mike Redman can send up uh, Derek Dietrich if he chooses. And Lucas has had a good game. Lucas is 10 for 17 against lefties. Yelich hit it pretty well. Avilon. Special cameo appearance exits. Carpenter coming in. Was the middle relief David Carpenter? The first four batters that he faced last night with a 3 1 lead reached with a hit, and Boston tied the game at three. Carpenter comes into this ball game to face Ed Lucas. Danny Echeverria 90 feet away, a one run game, a one run Atlanta lead. Fastball that misses outside. I think the choice of Mike Redman, he likes uh, the at bats that Ed Lucas has given him tonight. Lucas one for two with a walk. David Carpenter, so we have a couple of former catchers with Chris Hatcher, also a converted catcher. One ball and one strike. Of course, the one thing that differentiates Hatcher from every other converted catcher is that Hatcher got to the big leagues as a catcher and then got back to the big leagues as a pitcher. First and only. Actually, at first since the 40s. That's right, back in the 40s. First in a long time. That's right. Lucas laid on the fastball that counts one and two. So for the Braves tonight, Julio Tehran, seven and a third. Five hits, two runs, a walk and five strikeouts. Avilan got Yelich. Carpenter, the warm up act for Kimbrell, trying to get Lucas. Broken bat and it rolls to Freeman, who steps on the bag. Carpenter sawed him off and a 
one run Atlanta leads still. Along with Tommy Hutton, Craig Minervini, Jeff Conine, Rich Waltz with you. Atlanta has a one-run lead. Braves picking up three runs in the sixth, seventh inning. Game summary. If you're just joining us, coming over from the Heat game, which is at the half, here's how the Marlins got on the board. Well, if you are just joining us, you missed a 450-foot shot off the bat of John Carlo. His 16th of the year, he has 51 RBIs. The Braves were able to peck away though after a walk a couple of base hits Chris Johnson makes it a two to one ball game with that RBI base hit in the seventh inning after the pitcher had doubled Jason Hayward hits a triple in the left center field that tied the game he'd come in to score on this sacrifice fly so the sack fly off the bat of B.J. Upton Julio Tehran has pitched well. Tom Kohler pitched well. Unfortunately, the Braves got the three runs off him, and now the bullpen's turned over to Dan Jennings. Jennings in the ninth. It's Romero Pena. Dan Ungla is on deck, and then Jason Hayward. The Heat have an enormous lead at the half. And can advance to the NBA Finals with. It was a 24 26 point lead at the half. Yeah they they wanted to take care of business before uh, they didn't want to go back to Indiana. Isn't that the song they sing before the Indianapolis 500. Taking care of business. No. <laughs> oh, that would be a good one. That's <laughs> back home in Indiana. Back home in Indiana. <laughs> well there he is. Craig Kimbrell. You knew you'd see him. Or something to that effect. Isn't it? It's Jim Neighbors, right? Who's the guy that sings the song before the Indianapolis 500? We have to check our other resources. <laughs> that or is that Kentucky Derby? Am I, am I mixing up my races here? No, no, you're right. Jim Neighbors. All right. Still around. Gomer Pyle. And he sings. Indianapolis. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What's the song? Is it. Yeah, something. I about think it. so. Yeah, something about it back home again, Indiana. He might be an Indiana native. Okay. No, I think he's from Kentucky. So my right Golly. Yeah, I, I apologize for diverting into <laughs> pre race songs. in a one run game in a yeah, one. That's run usually game. about a six run uh, I know, effort in there. <laughs> no Sergeant Carter references though. Rich. No. Or okay. Goober pile. Gomer's brother. That went into the seats. That's two and two. This, a, this, by the way, would be a, a nice boost to the bullpen. Chris Hatcher had a nice inning. If Dan Jennings can come out and have a, a nice inning here in the top of the ninth.
Still count three and two. Stays three and two. Miami and Atlanta tomorrow. Remember a 4-10 start. And the game is televised on Fox Sports 1. Hug was on deck. Jacob Turner, Irvin Santana. And then Sunday, back on Fox Sports Florida, 1-10 start. Nathan Evaldi, Aaron Harang. Well hit over the head of Echeverria. Yelich picks it up. Pena has a single. And here comes former Marlin Dan Ugla. Checkers post game after the show. Jeff Conine will climb his stairway to heaven. And there he is. You see, he just uh, got up the stairs from the Clevelander. I think we saw Niner up there dancing with the dancers by the pool. Another frustrating year. Breaking ball for a strike. You can see the numbers. Ugla, a couple homers, three doubles. His on base percentage 254 and his slugging percentage is 257. And that goes along with a, a 179 batting average last year. And of course, for the Braves. They're kind of stuck as to what to do with the money. Do they eat the money? He's got another big year next year. He's owed over $20 million still. And remember, the, the Marlins said four years, that's it. Basically, the money was similar. But he wanted to get that fifth year. The Braves gave him that fifth year. Now they're paying the price, literally. literally. Ugla one hopper, Echeverria out there, out there. Ugla hit it hard. Miami turns its fourth double play of the night. That's a season high, and, and certainly the, the quick outs are great. And a good pick. That ball scooted and stayed down. It was hit hard by Ugla. But Echeverria makes a good play to stay with it. Had himself on his heels a little, but gave Ed Lucas a nice feed. Hayward now. John Carlos Stanton will lead it off with McGee and Jones scheduled in the bottom of the ninth. Hayward a couple more hits and he continues to to push that on base percentage up. And they have turned his double back into a triple taking the arrow away from Yelich. And on the on the downside that that adds that third run as an earned run to the line of Tom Cole. So seven innings seven hits. Still a nice start by Cole three three runs. Counts one and two. So nice work by Chris Hatcher and Dan Jennings. Miami down a run. Stanton coming up, but 
two-run shot tonight. Bottom of the ninth. Craig Kimbrell's coming in. Brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. By your South Florida Honda dealers and sfhondadealers.com. And by Florida Power and Light. In Miami tonight, the Marlins built a 2-0 lead. Braves came back. And at the bottom of the ninth, one of the preeminent closers in the game, Craig Kimbrell. 13 of 15 in save opportunities. Kimbrell last night came into the ball game in the eighth in a 3-3 tie. Got the out in the eighth, but in the ninth, he walked the first two he faced. An infield hit and an error. And Boston had the ball game. Stanton, McGee, Jones against Kimbrell. Who is just two saves shy of John Smoltz's franchise record of 154 saves? The thing about Kimbrell, too, Rich, he's been extremely successful, almost 90% success rate in closing out games. And a strike to stand at 97 miles an hour. Giancarlo, one for four. In his career against Craig Kimbrell. Strikeouts for nine innings in the National League. Look at that. Bounces that one to the screen. His repertoire at uh, mid to uh, upper 90s fastball and then a sharp breaking slider. End of the bat, shallow right. Hayward is there and he makes the catch. You know, the only the only two closers with 150 saves or more with a better percentage of saving games. The aforementioned John Smoltz and Eric Gagne. Well, Kimbrell rewarded with a four-year $42 million contract. He's still just 26 years old. He's the most efficient strikeout pitcher in baseball history. McGee is one for three. And then you've got Jones after that. This is how the Braves have won games this year. 
Not a lot of offense, but good starting pitching. Good bullpen. McGee lost his bat. He'll get a new one, but he's got to put some pine tar on it. I'm not so sure we've seen Casey do that all year. See the pine tar on this bat, and there goes the bat. He lost a little thumb pad, a little thumb guard. That rubber thumb guard came off too. The bat that he got from the bat boy was clean, so he got a, at least a swath of pine tar, not nearly as big as that. Kimbrel. Knee high strike. The outfield can't get much deeper. That is a strike. BJ up in the center. He's 400 feet away. His brother in left is almost on the warning track. McGee to right field. Hayward is over. And in fair territory makes the catch. So there are two outs. Here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And it's down to Garrett Jones who's 0 for 3. Well we we've talked about you know the Marlins home record coming into tonight 20 and 8. The Braves are three games under on the road. The Braves come into this one 10 and 13 on the road. Is on deck. Your 1 2 1 2012 1 0 1. Three and one, Garrett Jones, two outs, bottom nine. Atlanta up 3 2. the catch on the track and Atlanta gets game one and is in sole possession of first place. Craig Kimball gets three fly ball outs the third of which was hit well. Got that fastball out over the plate what he was looking for launched it. A lot of hang time for Upton to get there. So a very different uh, result for the Braves tonight compared to last night. They win it 3-2 in Miami. 